This is the ninth gene key, the power of the infant small. City, invincibility, gift, determination, shadow, inertia. The ninth city, invincibility, inner space, the final frontier. The world around us is filled with examples of the power that comes from taming the small. When humanity managed to tame the power of the atom, the basic magnetic unit of matter, we unlocked its tremendous energy and demonstrated a great universal law. The smaller something becomes, the more condensed is the universal energy within it. This law can be applied to your individual life as we learn through the ninth gift. There is one final surprise lying in wait for us within the ninth gene key, and it is found in its ultimate expression as a city of invincibility. The ninth city is about the power of the infant small, the infinitely small. The infant small is about the paradoxical. If one goes on dividing a piece of string in half, one could theoretically, theoretically go on forever. Thus, the infant small becomes the boundless and inner space leads to outer space. At the highest level of consciousness, levels themselves disappear. Outer space becomes inner space. Time becomes infinite, yet absolutely present. And all boundaries are absorbed by consciousness itself. Now, the moment something loses all boundaries, it becomes two contrary things. It becomes simultaneously defenseless and invincible. Invincibility can therefore be defined as merging your individual awareness back into the consciousness of the universe. To be invincible is to surrender to all possible foes by dissolving your entire reality into them. This is why these two closely named cities, the ninth, the taming power of the small, and the 26th, the taming the power of the great, are so intimately interconnected. The ninth represents invincibility, and the 26th represents invisibility. To be invincible is also to be invisible, and vice versa. Invincibility means to dissolve into the will of the universe, and it is the city that has been defied in many different cultures. In Christianity, for example, the archangel angel, angel Michael holds the archetype of invincibility. The only force in the universe that is truly invincible is love. Love knows only giving, so it creates a vacuum, which in turn continually floods with more love. It is impossible to fight against such a force since it renders all other energies defunct by returning them to their source. When a human being attains the city, their life becomes an expression of the invincible power of such love. These people have discovered that the entire universe exists in microcosmic form within the human body, and they may become truths, they may become teachers of this truth. In this respect, they can be masters of techniques within the microscopic, can be mapped onto the microscopic. Such people, I'll make sure I said that right. In this respect, they can be masters of techniques wherein the macroscopic can be mapped onto the microscopic. Such people become a, the focal point for an intense frequency of divine light with a very specialized task to fulfill on earth. The taming power of the small is like a laser that can pinpoint a very specific aspect of life, bringing enormous power to bear on the area. An ordinary person may find the aura of a, such a person almost unbearable, since it spotlights those aspects of your shadow nature that you most fear. It is, if you are blessed to be karmically tied to such a being, it is highly likely that full realization will occur in your lifetime. It is fascinating to see how the higher programming matrix within your DNA is coded to awaken specific forces within us at specific times in our evolution. The ninth city belongs to a family of cities that are interlinked through the human genetic structure by the amino acid known as theranine. Theranine brings together five, nine, 11, and 26 cities. The 26th cities, which collectively unlock two power, very powerful universal themes of humanity's higher nature, time and light. Known as the ring of light, these four themes, invincibility, timelessness, light, and invisibility, form a kind of cross-coding message that is designed to operate across entire gene pools. These will come, there will come a time when humanity will awaken very quickly to its highest genetic frequency through the wavelengths of light carried by the aura. The end of our mental experience of time will therefore be triggered by human auras interacting with each other. In this respect, humanity will only become invincible when it realizes its collective nature, at which point the individual becomes invisible in the sense of being completely porous to the indwelling group awareness. When the Ninth City teaches us today that every act you make is of vast importance to the whole evolution, if your life takes on a cosmic fo focus, then life itself will intensify within you, moving you naturally into a far more cooperative pattern with your environment and with others. Every intentional act is a magical act, setting, a motion, setting in motion either a force of creativity or a force of decay. Whenever you stand at the beginning of a journey, it is the first step that sets the tone for the entire journey and the next few steps that begin to create the group. 
After even a relatively for few steps, then it becomes very difficult to change your direction since it involves retching yourself out of your existing groove and creating a new one. Therefore, whenever you reach a natural beginning of a new cycle, a new relationship, a new home, or even a new year, you would do well to remember this truth. Those first few steps are critical to your evolution in the time ahead. You must capture the energy of your dream and hold it onto it deep inside because it is that dream that will act as a lens to focus the magic and manifestation in your life. The ninth gift, determination. Every intentional act is a magical act. The ninth gift fuels all determination. The gift of determination is built upon the rock of the very smallest acts. The controversial English magician, Alistair Crowsley, once stated a deep truth of great relevance to this gift. Every intentional act is a magical act. Even the smallest action has a spinoff effect that travels out into the universe. Actions made out of resentment or fear reinforce the shadow frequency, both in the world and in an individual. Indifferent acts reinforce indifference, whereas acts done in joy and service create more joy. Wherever we look into the matrix of the ninth gene key, it keeps pointing to the same truth, that a person without an ideal burning inside of them is essentially destined to remain a follower of the crowd. However, it is important to distinguish that this is not a gift of dreaming, but of sustained activity and work towards a single powerful goal. The power of the ninth gift is the power of repetition. This gift creates a groove, and once that groove is dug, all energy in your life will tend to follow the same pattern. This explains why the gift of determination is so powerful. It also explains why it is so hard to escape the inertia of the ninth shadow at its low frequency. When you break out of the lower frequency and connect with your vision or ideal as a feeling and a knowing deep inside, you have truly begun the journey of a thousand steps. Every single step you take from that moment on, which means all acts, no matter how inconsequential they may seem, lead in the direction of that core vision. As you continue in the direction of your heart, you begin to carve for yourself a powerful groove that becomes an easier and easier to follow and is what the world knows as determination. This changes the whole shape of your life, as finally you will begin to feel the inner strength that comes from following your life purpose. The strange thing about the gift of determination is that the more determined you become, the less energy and willpower you have to use. This is contrary to a common to the common view of determination, which is generally held to be a great battle or struggle. However, the secret of determination is momentum. All those little acts done with heart begin to build an inner momentum that eventually becomes unstoppable. The force of the entire universe begins to gather behind such a person. It is only at the beginning that you have to use a great force because those first few steps of the shadow frequency take such enormous strength of will and courage. Thus, the ninth gift reveals one of the great secrets of the gift frequency. The more you tread the path of heart, the easier it gets. Instead of being tamed by life, you forge your own direction and destiny through taming the power, taming the smallest and most inconsequential. I'll say that again. Thus, the ninth gift reveals one of the great secrets of the gift frequency. The more you tread the path of heart, the easier it gets. Instead of being tamed by life, you forge your own direction and destiny through taming the smallest and most inconsequential acts in your life. The ninth gift has an important connection to the power of magnetism. All of life is magnetic, and this gift employs that the use of magnetism through aligning itself with true north, the inner direction and rhythm sought by the universe as a whole. This is the groove we are speaking of. It is about moving down the force lines of the universal energy grid instead of moving across or against them. Determination in this sense reveals another meaning. Your true course in life is already predetermined and thus you have to do, all that you have to do is find it and follow it. As you mentioned at the shadow frequency, one of the most magical aspects of the ninth gift is the effect it has on your mind. Once you have centered yourself in the groove and your course begins to feel more and more certain, your mind finally stops undermining you the naturally flowing currents within your body begin to come into universal harmony. And as they do so, your brainwave cycles slow down and you enter a higher consciousness field. It is one of the paradoxes of the gene keys that the higher your spiritual frequency rises, the lower your brave brainwave frequency falls. These radical shifts in your mental functioning further serve to streamline the course of your life. With the mind operating that deep deeper levels of consciousness, you begin to let go of your mental constructs, your opinions, your fears, your beliefs, and even eventually your hopes. Your mind begins to submerge itself in a wider and more collective awareness. Not only does it undermine you less and less, and it also confirms that your direction is logically valid. At the height of the gift frequency, as it begins to prepare for the leap into the Siddic consciousness, you become aware of the vast power that can move through the very smallest of things, as your vision of reality expands to contain universes, you realize how small you really are. 
the same time you get to see how enormous your contribution to the whole is when you truly take the plunge and listen to your heart. The shadow of inertia, the domestication of dreams. In the original hexagram form in the Chinese I Ching, the ninth gene key is rather unusual and cryptic name which is commonly translated as the taming power of the small. If you're familiar with the I Ching, you might recall another hexagram, the 26th hexagram, whose name is the taming the power of the great. Eventually, there is a strong bond within these two archetypes and their gene keys. We can see that genetically, they are indeed part of the same chemical codon ring and its amino acid, theranine, which we will discuss later, or already discussed, <laughs> as is often the case with these old Chinese names. They contain many layers of truth and possibility. In the case of the ninth shadow, the taming power of the small refers to the human tendency to become submerged in unnecessary and irrelevant details. Most human beings live lives that they simply get by, lives in which they become victims of all the details around them. At the higher frequencies, you tame the small by applying your energy only to that which serves your higher purpose. At the shadow frequency, however, the details tame you, sapping your life force, robbing you of your enthusiasm, the 16th gift, the programming partner of the ninth gene key and eventually pulling you into the common human state of inertia and indifference, the 16th shadow. The Chinese sage La Tzu's uttered the famous statement, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Although the more accurate translation might be, the journey of a thousand miles begins beneath one's feet, this piece of timeless wisdom concerns focusing on, that lie, on what lies right in front of you rather than concerning yourself with where the future might or might not take you. The ninth shadow is about where you place that focus and primarily through your daily activity rather than your mind. There is something very magical about this ninth gene key, as we shall see. It holds one of the greatest of all secrets, how to stop your mind from undermining your de natural destiny. An image representing both the ninth shadow and the ninth gift is of a pathway made of individual stepping stones. At the frequency of the ninth shadow, the stepping stones go in a circle as what that is so that as you look down at each step, you fail to realize that you are simply following the same old footprint and your energy is going nowhere. This state of consciousness is the majority of human beings on the planet. At the gift level, however, the stepping stones go off into the distance and over the horizon. You do not know where they are going and it doesn't matter. You know they are leading you forward. This makes every step you take all important as well as an adventure. This ninth gene key is about finding the right activity in your daily life. Every step must lead you in the direction of your dream whatever that may be. Indeed, within this path are the many, many small acts we take on the mundane plane, eating, washing, shopping, cooking, etc. Because if all the steps, even the mundane daily chores lead you in the direction of your dream, it is impossible for them to be unfulfilling. If your activity leads you cold or bored, it does not necessarily mean it is the wrong activity. It probably means that you have lost contact with your greater dream. You've allowed the small to tame you. Every time you allow life to leave you bored or indifferent, or you feel this lack of energy and inertia, it is up to you and you alone to reconnect with your dream. Without a sense of higher purpose, human beings move in circles, creating energy fields that prevent abundance. Even worse, the inertia of the ninth shadow feeds off the victim mind, which all humans beings are natural rebels. We are wild creatures. We're not here on earth to have our dreams tamed, clipped, or domesticated. We are here to make magic happen, and we cannot do that unless every waking moment is directed and focused towards a single overreaching vision or ideal. The ninth shadow sucks all of the hope and enthusiasm out of you when you do not see immediate results and improvement in your situation. It takes you away from the focus and fulfillment of the moment and disturbs your connection and patience. One of the modern expressions of the ninth shadow is our addiction to trivia. Details and trappings are extraneous and unnecessary to our lives. Unless it is either beautiful or practical, it can safely be classified as trivia. The ninth shadow draws your energy away from that which truly matters to you, which is beauty. The energy field around this ninth shadow and its programming part partner, the 16th shadow of indifference, is a very intense cloud under which humans are stuck. Together, these two gene keys are a huge drain on your physical body. Lack of enthusiasm leads to a lack of energy and vice versa. You may even believe that you are taking steps to change when in fact all you are doing is going around in circles, still focused on details that are essentially irrelevant. The only way out of the field of inertia is to punch through it with one huge act of will. This first step out of the victim frequency resets your course onto a path that leads ahead rather than around. This ninth shadow deeply affects the energy systems within the body, closing them down to higher voltages and cosmic fre high frequency energies. It also has an adverse jamming effect on your inner directional guidance system, your heart. If your heart is not behind your every act, not only do you choose an inappropriate course in life and you 
also will continually wear down your health. In summary, then, if your life force seems low or lacking in energy and you are finding it hard to get enthused about your life, the answer may well lie in the night's shadow. You are either too focused on the future instead of giving your full attention to whatever is right in front of you, or there is no sense of overall purpose moving beneath your daily acts and activities. Without this sense of inner focus, a great deal of energy goes into complaining, whether vocally or mentally. All this energy needs to find a higher purpose, something that can serve, that takes you beyond the mundane world and all its details. Most human beings are unaware of how much energy they are sitting on inside of their own bodies. They truly, there truly is nothing in life you cannot accomplish, you cannot accomplish if you put your heart squarely behind it. The repressive nature is reluctance. There is an inner reluctance in the repressed side of the night's shadow. It manifests as our seemingly inability to do anything about our situation, despite the fact we understand it and even see our way out. The reluctance may move out of one's patterns is not a conscious choice, but an inner dynamic where all one's life force remains frozen. This reluctance is essentially a perilous peril. This essentially is this reluctance is essentially a paralysis of our will brought about by following familiar repetitive patterns that do not serve us. To break out of our inner reluctance is to leave our safety zone and move directly into our fears. It can be frustrating to onlookers that these people are unable to break their pattern, and it is just as frustrating for those in the grips of such deep-seated fear. Ultimately, it comes down to the power of the human will to either break through or fall into a continual or miserable decline. The reactive nature is diverted. The reactive nature of the ninth shadow involves a totally different kind of inertia. These people can be highly restless and fidgety, as though nothing inside of them can sit still. Their tactic is diversion, and they unconsciously seek any stimulus to draw out their energy and fury out of their body. Naturally, such people cannot sustain this escapist pattern indefinitely, and it takes an enormous toll on their health and often their finances. These people cannot find a fixed pattern in life at all. If they were to do so, all their rage would explode out of them. This makes it impossible for them to maintain serious commitments for any length of time. Although their lives are not inert in the sen strict sense of the word, they are inert in terms of fulfillment because they can simply never relax. Love you all so big. Thank you for being here for the ninth chinky.